So it has this information about word counts, byte counts, paragraph counts, and so on, which is okay, right? But if you go further down, it shows who saved it, what was the revision number on it. You see the number there? It has been edited 55 times. It shows the revision number. This is not some information that you may know, right? So I claimed that I made the presentation yesterday. But there are 55 revisions on the document. And it has various other things like when it was created, when it was printed even. When was the document last printed? It shows that the last printed field is free, which means I have never printed this ever. Right? So this is some information that you could use somewhere. Do you see? This is not something that you see from a projected set of slides. But it's there the file. I send the file to you, you have access to all these things. Right? So this is about information leak. Inadvertent leak, but it's there. So second, let's look at uh, key log. So I'm going to show you a simple uh, key log here, which can actually track the kind of logs that are happening. So as I type, it will show up in some screen. So this is actually a log of what I was typing in the Word document earlier. So it shows various characters there. It says I started yesterday. So this is a capture that I did, did yesterday evening, yesterday night. So at 11.20 in the night, I type hello and I type CMD. What is that? So I probably opened a command window, right? So I have this log file. It shows me that I opened a command window, which you have no way of knowing otherwise. Right? But it has logged the keys that I am typing in. And this thing about hello this is a document and other things. Right? It has some information that I was typing uh, yesterday, just logged it and there, so this is a very simple key logger. There are more sophisticated key loggers which can even tell you this. As you type, I may have multiple applications. I may have a Word document, I may have a browser that is open, I may also have uh, an Excel sheet that is open and so on. So it's a key, a layer key logger, any key that you type will go into a single file. The time stamps of when you type various things. Right? But a more sophisticated key logger, what it could do is can actually find out if you're typing in a particular window can also have information about this was typed in a notepad, this was typed in a word pad, this was typed in an office document and so on. Right? That is a lot more information than what you want to give away. Right? So leave alone somebody stealing a file from me, somebody is actually logging the set of keys that I'm typing, but it also knows which application I was typing each of these keys in. Right? So this is this key logger is both a security product and it can be a product which annoys you. So many times employers use these things so that the employees don't give away information. Parents use it for parental control of children. So there are legitimate uses of key loggers. But there are also all these illegitimate uses of key loggers. I could put one on my friend's computer and find out what my friend is doing. Right? So this is possible. So uh, the log that I have is very simple. But you could imagine logs created over periods of time which shows the kind of emails that you wrote, what passwords you have, what login accounts I have. Everything will be captured. So this I type from Word document. If I have a browser open where I access my Gmail account and so on, you will see that I type gmail.com, I type username, password. So maybe you cannot automate uh, or write a program which will find all these things automatically from a log. But a human being who looks at it will probably quickly say, hey, he's typing a URL in the browser and this is a username, this is a password. Right? So there is no information about where it was typed or anything here in the log file. But that could be done. And there are more sophisticated key loggers than what I have. What I have installed here. Then I have this other uh, software that I downloaded yesterday. It's called anti key logger, like I said. So for every poison, there's anti log. So this anti key logger uh, is very interesting. What it claims is any key logger that is running, it could stop it. So uh, I downloaded it yesterday, so it may not work anymore. But this is something that you can try yourself. So I downloaded this from CNET, anti dash key logger. It is actually paid software. But it has this trial period for a certain, certain uh, period of time. So it says, any keylogger that is happening, it can prevent it. So yesterday I checked that the same keylogger. So you see that the document that I opened. Okay. Oh, by the way, my password here I gave is hello, so that I remember it. You see that? It actually created this, it, it, it put one more line hello. So, See that? It actually created this. It, it, it put one more line. Uh, so the, the text in between, right? This two lines in between. I I turned on the key uh, anti key logger. It didn't log any of the other things that I typed. 
all these other things that I did not go to the Kila. So maybe one, after the session, so I'll try and show various kinds of tools that are there and maybe I can do personal demos uh, when, you, when the session is over. So I, I am showing something which is already canned, which I have done carefully yesterday and uh, I'll just replay it though. But all these can be done even now. Only that I have to sit down and show all these things. So uh, there is something called an anti-key logger. The key thing is I trusted the anti-key logger. Right? What is the anti-key logger itself? It's nothing. You wouldn't. Right? So uh, one way to look at it is I will write every piece of software myself and use that. But that's not completely practical. So you have to trust other things. And just because you are paying money to download a software, it doesn't mean that it's always legal. It's doing only legal things. Right? So even the software that you buy may have all this malware and adware attached. Right? So you have to be careful about these things. So you will also see that Valorant is going to give uh, the most of various other things. Uh, so for example, if so I don't have the buy data installed, uh, buy uh, software installed, but what it does is you could do something like this. So let's say I want to delete this file, I could do something like right click and you get an option called buy. If you install that, it will give you an option called buy and you buy, it will actually erase the data from the hard disk. So, so going uh, before that, right, what I want to do is, let me do this. So I want to boot this up in uh, Linux later, but before that I want to do this particular thing. So let's say I have this uh, presentation that I made. So I put some extension So I want to give an extension to something which is not a, a regular extension. example of an extension that is changed. I had temp dot ppt which was the original powerpoint file. I changed it to dot out and this dot out is not something that is recognized by windows. So windows will say that okay this is a file that cannot open. It's a powerpoint file. The only thing is I changed the extension. So windows has this view that if I have an extension, the extension should be used in launching the application. Otherwise you just simply refuse to open it. You can always open it in the word pad or something. Right? Or you can say attach or point to open these applications also. But I may not know this. This is a way in which you can probably think I'll hide files. So I'll change the extension thereby people do not know how to open these things. Right? So I try and boot this thing in Linux now. I have it saved on Windows Cloud. I boot this to answer show you different kinds of things that I can do without getting access to Windows like at all. So I'm going to shut down this thing and start with Linux. In the processes. So the one that I used here, so I didn't show you the rest, sorry, I forgot to show that. The key logger actually shows up in a list of tasks that are running. You could see that there is a task that is running which you don't know and you can kill it. But there are key loggers which operate under even a stealthier mode. Right? So you press a particular hotkey for so long, it will turn on, it will remain under the radar forever unless you want to bring it to the foreground. So there are key loggers like that available also. So I can boot this machine now and show it in the next. 